a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Let's give it up for Billy F. Gibbons. rather smooth. It, it's uh, it, quite smooth. I remember the first one, uh, the, the, uh, I did a little number. Uh, we, we had the section of one song, we did a little jump. Maybe this one. And uh, as we did our little six inch jump, the boat hit a wave going down. Which became a four foot jump. <laughs> So, we're smooth. <laughs> I was thinking watching you on the deck stage last night that I think we need to change the uh, middle initial, uh, uh, not change it, but now the F in Billy F. Gibbons stands for fan. Because okay. it was a blow in last night. It was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, quick question. Um, you waited quite a while to do anything on your own. I mean, you were... Tried and true to ZZ for many years before going out on your own. You're still with ZZ Top, of course. I don't want to uh, get any, you know, disappoint anybody. But why the decision then to finally start doing stuff on your own? What what got you to that crossroads, and what why did you decide to go with it? I fired the manager. No. <laughs> there there was uh, uh, just some interesting. Uh, in, I started working with, believe it or not, Depeche Mode. They said, ZZ Top and Depeche Mode, how does that work? It's like peanut butter and jelly. If it worked, it worked, right? Peanut butter and hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. But that started it, and then uh, the gates opened up. Uh, there was a recent magazine, uh, uh, kind of a highlight, it said, 60 things you didn't know about BFG. And it listed all of these different acts and artists that, that we'd had the opportunity to perform with outside of ZZ Top. And, uh, gosh, there's a lot of guys that owe me some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, all these different things about BFG on your website, because I was thinking I was going to wish you an early 75th birthday, but is that not the case? So are you turning 74? Because on your website it says, and I quote, born on either March 4th or December 16th, 1950, <laughs> both dates have been given in the past. I mean, that's a quote from your website, not from Wikipedia or anything, so you want to set the record straight? When I was born, I was zero years old. <laughs> but I'm going on 18. <laughs> Mature, maturity came a little bit early with the facial hair and everything. I get it. I get it. But this is a big year for um, ZZ Top, 55th anniversary of the band. Yeah. Uh, special? I mean, I, I know you're going to be touring. You've got the uh, Sharp Dress Simple Man tour with Leonard Skinner. Um, anything to uh, you know, signal out the uh, single out the 55th anniversary, or maybe when you get to 60. Well, I was talking to Keith Richards the other day, nice. and he said, uh, "You're not coming up on 55." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, you're going on 65." <laughs> 
Don't remind me. <laughs> but I, I like to be reminded. It's, it's it, I mean, God, we've got a way. We only know three chords. That's <laughs> <laughs> made a career out of it. <laughs> when um when we lost Dusty, um did you wrestle at all with continuing as ZZ Top? What went through your I mean, we know can only imagine what went through your head when you heard you know that he passed, but then taking that next step forward. Well, it was kind of a surprise to us. He said, listen, I'm feeling out of sorts. I said, well, we got a, we got a 10 days break here before the next show. Why don't you go see a physician and knock it out? He said, yeah. He said, uh, if I'm late, be sure and give my guitar to our guitar tech who, who'd been with us for 30 years, who taught Dusty half the stuff that he knows. <laughs> so he was, he was, uh, as the story goes, Dusty went back and, and uh, he went to see the doctor uh, on arrival and he said, look, it's late in the afternoon, go home, get some rest, come back in the morning and they went to sleep and that was that. So Elwood, uh, now keep in mind, El when Elwood was hired, as our, he, he served as a guitar tech and bass tech at the same time, uh, already an accomplished guitarist and bass player. But when he was hired, he showed up with an avocado sandwich in one hand and a skateboard under the other. <laughs> For 30 years, I never saw him with a whisker, clean shaven, but then the lockdown occurred and one day the manager said, hey, it looks like ZZ Top's gonna, the curtain is rising, you're gonna go back to work. I said, well, we better rehearse. We haven't played in over 18 months. Maybe it'd be time to <laughs> learn what we're supposed to know. Uh, I showed up and I said, who's the new guy? And they said, which one? I said, that new guy with the beard as long as mine. They said, oh, that's Elwood. I said, no, Elwood's clean shed and they said no. Elwood got lazy like I did. <laughs> and uh, so there you have it. Uh. He stepped in and he, he uh, of course he, he he fit right in on on it was at Dusty's request, listen, give my guitar to Elwood. I recently shared a dressing room. Uh, I was playing a show. Uh, I was in New York, and I was sharing a dressing room with the original five blind boys of Alabama. <laughs> and we got along great, and there was, the minder was a young fellow, and he grabbed me and he said, listen, he said, I, I need to leave the room. Can you take care of my guys for a minute? I said, yeah, sure. As soon as he walked out the door, the guy grabbed me. He said, can you lead me to the bathroom? I said, sure, yeah, come on. So I became the minder. And uh, the guy finally came back and he said, gee, he said, uh, you're so fortunate. Uh, your man Elwood, came, he just showed up with a big beard, he fits, fits right in. I said, yeah. And he said, of course, you know, if you want to join our guys, you've got to be blind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's because I asked that question because, you know, look, you're getting, you know, you know, for the longest time it was uh, you, it was easy, Aerosmith, you two, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Uh, those were like the biggest of the big bands that stayed together for so long with their original lineups. I mean, not even the Stones are original anymore, and the Who, of course, sadly, are no longer. So I was kind of wondering where you, where you stand on bands who continue to go out under their moniker without certain key members. I mean, is, is it a key member decision to, to make? I mean, if, if Frank came to you and said, I'm retired, I'm retiring, are you still gonna go out as easy? Frank, Frank told me he had retired about 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 
don't know who that guy is back here. <laughs> Uh, that's an interesting story. Uh, as everyone may know, the last surviving <coughs> original member, or one of the last surviving original members, uh, Gary Rosington, the guitarist, when he passed away, I said, well, she was, that's, that's going to be it. That's, that very day, I got a phone call from now singer Johnny Van Zandt. And he said, I said, oh gosh, I'm so, uh, uh, so glad to hear from you. He said, I heard the news that uh, Gary Rosington has now passed away. And he said, yeah. He said, uh, I know ZZ Top is going out next week. Can Leonard Skinner, we're going to press onward. Can we join the, join the tour? So I said, well, we gave you, we, ZZ Top hired Leonard Skinner as our opening act. We gave them their first paying job. <laughs> and they're still doing it. So, yeah, it's a good thing. So, you know, the question I think is, who's the star of the show? Is it the music or is it the people playing it? Now, with you, you know, that beard is kind of a dead giveaway. So if you're not up there. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, it's just an interesting question. To me, anyway. Well, it's... For, not going on, was it next year we're celebrating 55? This year. This year. Unless that's wrong in the bio too. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's supposed to turn 75 this year. I hope that's right. Oh, well, I keep telling Frank, I am the star of the show, Frank. <laughs> but, you know, he, out of the three guys, you know, it's two beards and Frank, Real name Beard, the man that is clean. Sh no beard, Frank. No beard. <laughs> well, hey, you know, ZZ's still going, and that's what we're happy about. So, kudos to ZZ and on, on, on all these years and uh, for many, many decades together, and hopefully many more to come. So now the question: You're out with a trio. So what's the difference between this trio and ZZ Top? How do you see it in your mind? Well, there's different people, different approaches to uh, the way the delivery <coughs> explodes. Um, this is an interesting gathering. Uh, someone said, gee whiz, I saw you play last night. Two guitars and drums, but we hear a bass. You got somebody off hiding behind? No. We met a guy in Los Angeles, and uh, he was a neighbor, and he said, hey, come on over. I've got something to show you. I've got a new guitar pickup. And I said, oh, there's hundreds of... He said, no. Mm -hmm. He made a guitar pickup that has a, a miniature computer mounted on board. Visually, you cannot detect any difference from a standard humbucking pickup than this contraption that he's made, but this thing detects the bottom string and throws it an octave lower to become a bass. So I said, gee whiz, let's try it out. And, and it worked out. And uh, so we installed it on not one, but two guitars. So. I play guitar, Austin Hanks, although he's left-handed, upside down, and backwards. I can't even look at him. <laughs> <laughs> we both installed these, uh, this, it's called A Little Thunder. That's the name of this pickup. Both of us take it. So we, you may not see it, but you will hear it. Not one, but two bass players. And so- We don't have to pay them. <laughs> yeah, so I guess Elwood's days are limited in ZZ Top, then you can just do both yourself. <laughs> Poor guy. Just getting going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But who, so, who determines then the bass playing part of it, and who determines the guitar playing part of it? When we were seeing it on, on stage last night, you know, we, do you go pick a song, you do the bass part, and I, or it just automatically does it as you're playing the guitar? Uh, 
we 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 have domain over who has who gets the low part, and uh, when when Austin wants to be the lead soloist, I say I love it when you solo, mm -hmm. so low that I can't hear it. <laughs> You know, it's interesting because you know, you're a, a big guitar collector, and you know, 99% of the shows that you've ever done, you never stick to one guitar. And these two shows, you've literally stuck to one guitar the entire show. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of room on this boat here. <laughs> Will you use that guitar with, on, with ZZ Top now too going out, or then no, that's, that gets put back on the rack and then all the old, you know, what you have comes back? I made the announcement and Elwood said, absolutely not. <laughs> said, there's only room for me. Um, with so many... I, actually, I, I take that back. Elwood said, he said, let's try it. He, he was impressed with the show that we're presenting <coughs> on board. Uh, tonight is the closing night for everybody. Yeah. I believe we all disembark tomorrow. <laughs> we do. Unless we shanghai the boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I say we go to Jamaica. Uh, with, with such a uh, large guitar collection, have you ever um, thought of following in the footsteps of your buddy Eric and uh, Mark Nafla recently by selling off some of the guitars? Oh, gosh. Uh, no. <laughs> Just curious. Yeah. One's too many and a hundred ain't enough. <laughs> and what about um, with um, with uh, Chuck recently, uh, Charlene, uh, uh, Dusty's widow, uh, they refer to her as Chuck, which I'm sure you all know, but Charlene, uh, when she auctioned off a bunch of Dusty's belongings, did you, uh, was there anything that you wanted or did she even approach you to say, would you like any of this stuff? Oh gosh, uh, I gave her, a, I gave her a bunch of stuff. Did you? Yeah. Didn't you didn't his stuff on top of your stuff. <laughs> I, well, she didn't know, but it was. I said, "Here, take this." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good for you. So, got the tour with uh, Leonard Skinner coming up. Uh, talk to me about um, recording. The last uh, ZZ album with La Futura in uh, 2012. There are tracks recorded with Dusty. There are tracks recorded with Elwood. Uh, you've you've uh, said that the tracks with uh, Dusty uh, is a little more warmth because he plays with his fingers. So w where are we on a, on a future ZZ Top album? Very good point. <coughs> um, someone said, gee whiz, uh, ZZ Top sound has remained the same. Uh, it's it's a slightly different in the fact that uh, it's become perhaps a little more focused and sharper. Dusty, as most folks know, played with his fingers. Elwood, being a guitarist as well as a bass player, uh, prefers to use a pick, which of course does make a, a little more uh, uh, sharp attack. Um, it, it's just... It's an interesting difference mm -hmm. to, to see uh, everything contained in the same manner with, with uh, kind of the kind of exciting new sharpness. Yeah, and so... And Frank, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but are there plans to get back in the studio to, to finish uh, some of these recordings that you do have in the can? If we could ever get off of this boat, <laughs> which just... we're not, we're going to Jamaica. <laughs> All right, great, great story. You, you've told it before, but uh, for the benefit of this crowd, um, great version of Foxy Lady by Jimi Hendrix. 
you, you knew the man, and he was a champion. Uh, of, he championed your guitar playing and stuff. Can you tell us how you met Jimi Hendrix? Do I really have to? <laughs> Short version. Uh, before ZZ Top, I was uh, heading up an outfit called The Moving Sidewalk. <coughs> we had a nice uh, uh, phone call from uh, the manager called up, and, he's, and this was a time when it was a big deal to start realizing there were groups from this place called England that were making big. <laughs> Guy said, hey, uh, we got a phone call. There's, there's a group coming over and would like you to join the, uh, the tour. And I said, who might that? Well, uh, it's some group from England. Whoa, English group. We get to join the English guys. Well, who is it? Oh, uh, some sort of Jim, Jim someone, Jimmy someone. Well, I had a girlfriend living in London. She had sent me a copy of the Are You Experience, the first Jimi Hendrix record. And it arrived before it had been released here in the States. Are we back in internet? Are we out of international waters? Are we still, are we in the States yet? No, we're not in the States. Don't worry. Whatever it was, right. says on this boat stays on the boat, especially since we're going to Jamaica. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaica. So uh, uh, we received this uh, advanced copy of Are You Experienced? And wow, we were so like, we played it for four hours. Played side A, played side B. But uh, the, the, we agreed to, to join this tour with the Jimi Hendrix experience, but it called for 40, 40 minutes. We were so new to this thing, we only knew how to play about 30 minutes. But we had learned two Jimi Hendrix songs, which made it 40 minutes. <laughs> so I said, you are kidding. You're not going to go out in front of Jimi Hendrix playing Jimi Hendrix song. <laughs> Foxy Lady in Purple Haze, yeah, we could do it. So, uh, as we closed our section of the show, I remember looking off to the side and in the shadows I saw a guy <laughs> folded, kind of grimacing. And as we walked off, two arms grabbed me, spun me around, and it was Jimi Hendrix. He goes, you got a lot of nerve. <laughs> I like you. I want to get to know you. <laughs> and you know, I know. Sadly, we lost him very, very early on and stuff. But did you, did you have a little bit of a relationship with him then thereafter? Yeah. Um, at the time, uh, we were assigned. Night by night, we we find ourselves we were we were relegated to the end of the hall at the very last rooms on any given hotel. He was on the left, I was on the right. We were across the hall from each other, and his door was always open. He waved me, "Come on in here, I got." Um, he had he had two uh, two helpers that night by night they would bring in this record player. This, longer than this, I mean, it was a piece of furniture. But uh, he said, I need you to help me out. How do you, uh, how, do you think, how do you think he does? He was playing the first record by the Jeff Beck group, trying to learn. I said, Jimmy, you're telling me you want to learn what Jeff Beck, I guarantee you, Jeff Beck, is trying to learn what you're doing. <laughs> wow. It was cool. Yeah. And speaking of Jeff Beck, he was a buddy of yours, yeah. a hot rod buddy. Uh, uh, yeah. It was shocking when we got the news, um, but you did get to go over and play at his tribute concert when your other buddy, uh, Mr. Clapton, who is, uh, is he still noted on your business card, by the way? Clapton? Still have it. Still have it? Yeah, and uh, so he invited you over to do to take part. Now, what was that like uh, going over to do that? Well, uh, to bring you up to speed, uh, just uh, as we were uh, leaving to board the ship, we got a phone call from uh, Jeff Beck's wife and his uh, tour manager, mm -hmm. Sean Hartman, 
and they said, gee whiz, uh, we know that ZZ Top is going to go out. Uh, would you have an interest in playing a song since you're playing? Jeff Beck's favorite ZZ Top song was Rough Boy. Mm -hmm. so we still play it. And uh, they said uh, it was Jeff's, and, and we had the opportunity to tour together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll never forget the first, one of the first nights out, Jeff came into the dressing room and he said, oh, did he? He said, uh, could I join you for a, a, a number? I said, sure, Jeff, you want to come up and play one? He said, Dude, could, could you play Rough Boy? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, okay, why not? And uh, in fact, if you can go on and YouTube has several clips of Jeff Beck joining us on, on performing, you, uh, performing Rough Boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have, they have, uh, They've insisted that that I take Jeff Beck's guitar and play Rough Boy on his guitar, which I'm hmm. so thrilled to be able to accept that invitation to do. It'll be cool. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, all right, and as we uh, get set to wrap up here, um, you're uh, you now have a line of cigars out. Recently, that was announced. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Goes along with the hot sauce and the whiskey and the cowboy boots. Now, how long have you and I been working together? Over, oh, it's, over it's, a decade. Oh yeah, it's it's going close to Two thirty decades. years. Yeah, yeah, it's close. I remember one time he came in studio. Uh, him and him, Frank and Dusky. And I guess they were going to go on tour, and I had them talking to a whole bunch of stations, and uh, he loved it because he was in one studio, and from the one studio in New York, he spoke to Seattle and Boston and Philly and Pittsburgh and blah blah blah, blah and he comes over to me afterwards and says, "Seamus, this is the way to do it. Just one stop shop." <laughs> you can help me out. Uh, this new line of cigars. I was invited to. Uh, it was uh, one of the big distributors said, we've got, a, we've got an idea, we'd like to sell the Billy F. Gibbons Twin Turbo. I said, what is that? It's, it's two cigars in a nice package. Mm -hmm. I said, it, should the word, if, if it's two, does that mean it should be plural? Turbos or turbo? <laughs> But then you've got the word twin, which already means two. <coughs> but obviously they're not a hot, the guy was asking me, I said, you're not a hot rod guy. Mm -hmm. A turbo means two. Yeah. So for those of you, when you see the video of Gibbons <laughs> Twin Turbo Pack, you know you're getting two. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, you still need the hot sauce? Still the hot sauce? Or? The Whisker Bomb hot sauce for those of you uh, anybody from Texas here? <laughs> you may know uh, the great grocery chain, H-E-B. Yeah. Uh, they carry our hot sauce. Dollar General carries it. <laughs> next next to the cheap sunglasses, I got it. Um, it's, it's on the cheap aisle. <laughs> Whisker Bomb hot sauce. Okay, and cowboy boots and whiskey. And here's one. This kind of went under the radar, but you are now a partner in a little club called the Wise River Club in Wise River, Montana, with a good friend of yours, uh, Tim Montana, uh, whose uh, buddy Jay Crownover I play baseball with, so you talk about a small world, but here you are up in uh, Montana at this little club, and you, had, you went up there too, uh, to kind of, uh, you know, like almost like cut the ribbon or something to that effect. Yeah, someone said, gee was we've heard so many. Tim Montana, a real name, who is from Montana. Tim Montana. Someone said, how did you get to, to be a songwriting partner with this guy, Tim Montana? By the way, Tim Montana has the number two song on the charts right now. Called, the song is Devil You Know. It's, I wish I'd written it. <laughs> it's, it's really, really great. But uh, 
I've known Tim now since 2007, I believe, when the Boston Red Sox were in the World Series baseball uh, game. The series, not just the game. Yeah, the, the World series. series. They had not, they had not entered the series since 1933, and they finally. And these are the guys you may remember. The Boston team vowed to quit shaving until they won the pennant. Uh -huh. And it was crazy. It was like, oh, these guys, they haven't been in. So uh, I, I remember uh, we were traveling from Knoxville, Tennessee. We were on the way down to South Carolina. And a buddy of mine from back in Los Angeles said, hey, he said, I went by your house. I said, I see you're out. You're not home. I said, yeah, we're out on the road. He said, oh, I noticed. He said, you're going from Knoxville. Are you stopping in Nashville? And I said, yeah. We've got a two-day break. He said, well, I've got a buddy. He's just starting a group called Tim Montana, and, and they, they're just starting a record. Maybe you could help them write a song. I said, eh, it's my two days off. Who is this guy, Tim Montana? He said, yeah, he's got a band. I said, what are they called? He said, Tim Montana and the Shrednecks. <laughs> Not shredders, not rednecks, the shred. I said, two and one, I'm in. <laughs> so we wrote this song. I, I went over to the studio and they, I said, so Tim, I said, good to see you in the shrednecks. I said, got, got to, I understand you, were, got, any, got anything to start with? He said, no, not really. I said, well, as I came down the hallway, your guitar player was kind of singing an interesting melody. Well, we're kind of embarrassed about it. We, we haven't really finished it. And I said, well, you, it's it's a pretty, could we use that? What do you call that? He goes, I don't know, we're kind of embarrassed. <laughs> what do you call it? He said, this beard came here to party. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you on that. <laughs> uh, well, listen, uh, oh, by the way, we recorded, the, they, uh, we finished it up, Tim and I wrote it, took five minutes. I said, I'm gonna go down the street, I'll come back. I want you guys to record it, get it arranged, record it, we'll see what he, so sure enough, came back and it was completed and I was very impressed. I said, I'd like to have a CD copy just for my own. I said, this is really, really good. The new manager, she took me uh, across town. She said, before I take you back to your hotel, uh, I'd like to take you to a restaurant. It's just across town. I said, okay. And while we were sitting there, a guy came up and he said, hey man, I know you. I know what you do. I said, oh, great. You want to know what I do? I said, sure, man. What do you do? He said, I'm the guy that picks the music that goes into a commercial and comes out of a commercial for national sports teams. I said, oh, you're the bumper music guy. I said, yeah. I said, what you got? He goes, oh, I got to go to Boston. I, you know, those guys, that, they're in the World Series. And I said, I got a song for you. <laughs> he took it up, played it for the Boston Red Sox manager and owner. They picked it as their theme song. And what did they do? They won the pennant. <laughs> your pocket you mentioned your buddy Keith Richards as his uh, buddy put that in your pocket they share the birthday you know who that is oh yeah all right well listen everybody uh, Billy I really appreciate you taking the time to do this he's got one more show today it's at 545 in Studio B gonna get intimate lights are low and you're gonna be looking sharp I'm sure uh, are, are, are you're you're gonna stay with this group and they go on to, where is it, with your Jamaica? Yeah. <laughs> Don't see you there. Oh,